So my name is Tanya Horgan and I'm PNG PGO and I was president in 2009. There were a few first. I was one of the youngest women. I missed being the youngest president at my time because there were younger ones that came after me. But I missed being the youngest president by a few months. Mr. Wheaton beat me by a few months, but that's okay. Um, and I was also the first president to be pregnant in the middle of my, my reign. And I achieved my PGO in the middle of it. So I was a double designated president during my term as presidency. So that's a couple little firsts that I had. Pretty cool. Well, that was a hard one. When I was looking at the questions that we had to think of, like, what was my favorite memory? Because I have a lot of different memories, and there's some of them that kind of combine the two with some of the questions that we had. But one of my favorite one was my very first, my very first council meeting. You know, my inks fresh off my stamp. I'm all excited to get to the meeting, and I'm representing St. John, and I'm sitting beside Brent Smith. And if I think about back to when I was president, all the not when I was president, when I was on council, to all the people that were in the room. There was Hollis and Brent and Al. Like, uh, there were a lot of presidents on council when I was my very first day. So my very first day I show up and in my mind I'm thinking, okay, Tanya, don't speak, just listen. Just listen, don't speak, don't speak. So I, and then all of a sudden somebody said something and I, and I get up and blah, 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 and said something and everybody started laughing in the room. And then I, of course, felt a little bit like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? And they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. You have lived up to the St. John name. So everybody who comes from the St. John branch is very loud and very vocal, and so you've just pretty much uh, lived up to that status. So I was like, okay, so that is pretty, so it's kind of like a funny, but it's a big memorable thing that I have. Now, obviously it was a lot of fun to be um, one of the youngest women, and so that was a big first, so that was something to, as a big memory that I had. Um, but my big kind of memory, proud of, excited, all kind of rolled up into one, was all the friends that I've gathered from it, as we had, a great time on council because I was on council for many years before I became president. So I've been on council from the day that I got my stamp on. And I have met so many wonderful people and a very diverse group. So we have young, we have old, we have uh, men, we have women, we have Anglophone, Francophone. So it was a really, so my memories are more of, I really feel like I have some long lasting friendships because of this experience that I've had. But I'm not a, I'm more of an atypical engineer, I would say, than some of my counterparts. When I went to university, most people thought I was in phys ed. I'm a little more outgoing. I, uh, I have no problem being out there, speaking my mind. Um, and I am very active. So I just, it's just not your like pocket protector. We joke about that pocket protector and all engineers, you know, know what color everybody else's shoes are because they're always looking down instead of looking up. So we jokingly say that when we go to the high schools and talk to the different students about why being an engineer is so great and how it's so much fun and you get to do whatever you want to do and it's a great experience. And we often say like, if you want to be that person that sits and doesn't talk to anybody all day long, you can be an engineer. If you want to be the person that goes out in the field and sits down, you can be that person. But if you want to be somebody who's like, ta-da, here I am, you can be that person. My biggest funny story, which will tie into Andy, but I also have a funny story about Andy as well, is one of my funny stories is I was sent to the wrong event as president when I was during my presidency. I was sent to an event which I thought was the U to M iron ring ceremony. So at the end of our, you know, when you go to university, you get your iron ring, like that is a symbol that you finish and it's very exciting and it's what everybody's proud of and makes you humble and grateful. That's what I thought I was going to. So I go to UDM, which I am not francophone. I do understand French, but I'm not francophone. So I was very nervous, I had a speech all prepared, for an iron ring ceremony. I get to, you know, Crystal Palace, I have a friend with me, she's shopping, I'm going there, woohoo, we get in there and I'm looking around the room thinking, there are a lot of young people in here to be graduating, and a lot of teachers, and this isn't set up how our iron ring ceremony is set up as. And then I ask someone from UDEM, they're like, no, 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 like this is the celebration. So this is basically the kids roast their professors all different grades, all different, you know, electives, everything. And I'm there to represent the, the association as an iron ring ceremony, a very staid, very, you know, this is an obligation, da, 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 da. with that's the speech I have, with French and English both going, oh my gosh, so we have a little break. And I'm like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? So I go to the hallway, I call my friend. I'm like, okay, so give me some, give me some phrases in French that I can say that's gonna be adequate for this. Like, what am I gonna do? Now, let me tell you, did I, like we rode Andy higher than that for a long time. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like this is what I went to do? So I made it through. I didn't last the whole night, but they were there for like four hours. But my poor friend sitting in the car waiting 
because we thought we were just going to an ironing ceremony and we're going to be done in a little bit. Yeah, so that was one of my like Andyisms. There's more, but that was a, a funny memory that I have of being on the association where you don't necessarily always get to go into what you thought you were going to do. I was on council when we hired Andy. So I've known Andy his whole time with the association. And I would say that he brought a lot to our association. You know, for all of his neurotic behaviors sometimes, it's exactly what we needed. We needed somebody who cared. We needed somebody who took pride in what he was doing and to make sure that we were well represented. We never worried that when Andy went to a different committee, to a different group, that we weren't going to be well, well represented or look out for us as engineers and geoscientists. So I'd say Andy did an excellent job. He's a great man. He's a very kind soul. Um, and we make fun of him because he's an easy target. But I think sometimes easy targets are the people that you really like and care for. And that's an easy way to make, you know, to make a little jest, a little fun at them. But I would think that we're going to miss him a lot. Um, I know for me, especially where president, it was him and I a lot. Um, I get to know him a little bit more than maybe some other people would have gotten to, and I'm really going to miss him, and I really think he's a great, great man. I'm really proud of our diversity. I would say that uh, it was very apparent when we went to other organizations. So we went to Engineers Canada meeting, and you're sitting there with different groups from Ontario and Alberta and Saskatchewan, and you're talking about your council versus their council. And at one point in time, I was sitting beside a past president from Ontario, and we were at, you know, there are three past presidents representing their association, and la la la. Well, he, it was his third time as president of the Ontario Association. The first time was the year I was born. And I thought, oh my goodness. Like, I know that our older generations of engineers are very relevant and are very keen and are very inclusive. Um, even from listening, I thought, oh my goodness, I don't know what your, like, how that helps. When you talk about what else you have on your council, like what other people do you have on your council? And they were all men, all over 50, all had been on council before. And I thought, okay, well, what? I don't know if you're bringing now to your council. Whereas with our group, I mean, oftentimes we have a 50-50 split of men, women, Anglophone, Francophone. You know, we are well represented from all different regions within the, our New Brunswick and our province. So I think... That was a big eye-opener for me when we went there and thought, oh my goodness. And also, like I was really proud of the way that we handled ourselves when we went to, like we're a smaller organization, you know, the big bad Alberta and Ontario when you go. And uh, we're always able to hold our own. I know in a meeting that we were up there, poor Andy again, God love him, because I'm not the shy one. And you know, you're supposed to, there's certain rules and regulations and I hear something that I don't agree with and I, got on my, I get on my soapbox sometimes and I have certain things that I get on a soapbox for and I get on my soapbox at one of these meetings. And just said like, that's not right. Like this is, you know, right is right and wrong is wrong. And I get up and said my little spiel and sat down and didn't a couple of people stand up and applaud me afterwards. And I thought, okay, you know what? I'm pretty proud that not only was I able to do that from myself proud, but then also proud of representing New Brunswick that we're not this little backwood little province that sometimes I think people forget about because you just keep doing your thing and it keeps on going and oh, but you're not, you're not us. Well, we have just as much, much industry here. We are just as relevant. You know, don't push us on the back burner. So I'm really proud of the way that we represent ourselves when you go outside of our province. I think part of it is, like when I became president, I never felt like I was young and I was a woman. I never felt that I didn't have the support of past presidents. So I think that helps that our past presidents who, you know, are older, that have been involved with the association, some have volunteered for 40 years. And what other association can you say, or what other company that can you say that has that, that back, that backing behind that? And I never ever felt like they were, hmm, I don't think so, hmm, that I think our engineers in our province really take pride in their career and their profession, and because of that are willing to accept whatever. I do think we have a lot of innovative companies that have been involved in New Brunswick landscape for such a long time that it allowed that ability. And I think it kind of permeated through all of our, all of our different people. And I think so that's part of the, I really put a lot of congratulations, I would say, on our past presidents on welcoming our new. And that, that's almost really the expectation of, I think back to how I got involved with the association. 
I worked for Fundy Engineering, and that was when I received my, you know, I'm doing all my background to get my PNG, and as soon as I get my PNG, like, like I said, like fresh ink on my stamp, I have my PNG, and Peter McKelvey and Gore Moulin, who um, owned Fundy Engineering at the time, were like, all right, you got your stamp, now get on council. I was like, oh, but it was, it was just an expectation, like, no, no, you get on council and, you, and that's what you do because you're proud of your profession. You're proud of being an engineer. You're, this, is part of, this is part of your duty almost to be able to do that. So it was never something that I had to ask if I was allowed to do or it was just something almost expected of you. That, no, 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 you continue on. Like, this is what you do. You give back. We're very deliberate in some of our things that we do within our St. John branch when we go speak with elementary schools and um, high schools about engineering and we give our presentations. Marlo, Marlo Rose is very adamant on making sure that a woman goes with, so that there's always women represented. Sometimes there's more, there's only women that go, but that, so it's not just two men going to talk to people about engineering. It's no, 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 no. This is well-rounded. And I think a lot of it is the more we talk about the different types of engineers and how it affects everything that you do and you can do the feel good, you can do the very, very research only, you can do whatever. I think that helps a lot with it and opening it up and broad broadening people's views of what engineers are because I certainly don't match a lot of it. Well, and it's funny because I have no, up until I went to university, no one in my family, my immediate family, aunts and uncles had ever gone to university. I was the only one. I, uh, I love math and science, so that really helped obviously a lot. I, um, but it was either, I did a, it was funny because I did a, tells you a little bit about my personality as well. We did a, we had to get, we answer some questions and it tells you what your proficiencies are. My proficiencies were engineer, architect, or forestry. And I thought, okay. One of them was a hairdresser as well, which I totally agree with that, yes. Um, so yeah, so I think that that, uh, for me, it was some of that. And then my mother. I have a very, very strong wonderful mom that told me I could do anything whenever I wanted to. So it never even occurred to me that I couldn't do it. And, you know, the opportunity was like, okay, do I want to be an architect or do I want to be an engineer? So that was a big one. And I think a lot of people have that. And I realized that I'm not necessarily good at the ta-da, what am I going to design? I'm more good at the, I want to make it a reality. And so that was why I chose engineering. But I was really lucky that my mom always said, you can do anything. So that's pretty much how I get into it. My mom. My concern is complacency, that I think we are very lucky to be self-regulated. I think that adds a little bit of onus on us to make sure that we rise to a better standard than others. And I think that if we become complacent, we have the opportunity to lose that. And I think that's something that we have to really be careful of not losing. And I think a lot of times with technology, we have to be with technology and not fighting against it, nor trying to rise above it or be better than it. I think we have to embrace it to a certain point that allows us to continue on the way that we are going. So that for me would be our biggest, uh, our biggest challenge and like complacency is gonna, like let's just not just ride on the coattails of, it's always been great, yes we're engineers, you know the big joke, engineers rule the world, ah ha 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 ha. But if you don't do anything to protect that, and protect, we have to be careful when we say protect that we don't push. We protect and maintain what is right, but don't push away and become blinded and boxed in. Because that's one of our greatest strengths, like I said earlier, is being able to be open and, and being able to accept a lot of things, but you have to just make sure that we protect what we have because it's something worth protecting. Public safety is our big concern, right? Like we, we, everything that we do is to ensure that we make people safe, that we are not going to have anybody fall in a building, we're not going to off a bridge, that we're not going to build something that's going to come apart. So it's the safety aspect of it. So if you trust someone that doesn't have all those those back things behind you to say that yes you are valid yes you can do this yes it's okay and if you don't have someone that's regulating that and that's watching that out for you then we're not really making sure that the public's safe and so I really think we have to be careful of a lot of things that are online that we can just go get a design for what we think we want we can just get someone to rubber stamp something well they have a stamp they can just stamp it for us I think that is a big concern especially with an electronic stamp well how do we know I mean they can make anything electronic so how do you know that that's valid and you're relying on something that your kids or your parents or your aunt, like you have to be really careful about that. So I think the technology, as long as we use it properly, is an invaluable tool. But we have to make sure that the public understands 
what is right and what is wrong. That a lot of times people, if you look at who, the different professions that people um, respect, engineers are always up there. But we want to make sure that they're respecting engineers, not people who they think are engineers. I would say be that person that I was when I first started and make your voice heard. That having a bunch of people in a room, we are all have a lot of pride, we have a lot to offer, and everybody has a talent. And that talent may be something different in your maybe engineering related or maybe your way you communicate or whatever. That I think if you have a room of a lot of quiet people who don't speak, you're not going to get a lot. Now, I'm not saying everybody's got to go around and fight and punch and blah, 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 but I also think that there's a lot of value in some discussion. So I really, my advice would be to speak up and to get involved and to do more than you even think you should. Because I think once you do more, like there's, I learned so much and gained so much from being on council and being president understanding what our association does. Because a lot of people don't really pay their dues and yeah, 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 what do they do for us? But being that self-regulated body is enormous. And the magnitude is so much that I don't think people realize because it's just always there. So I think you want to make sure that our people on council are have pride and have passion for what they're doing and are there to really make a difference or to see that we, and it doesn't even necessarily have to have a difference as long as we maintain what we need, which is our self-regulated. I love to volunteer. It's part of my, my mom's input on that. But I think part of it is I want to be involved. Like it was, and every president will tell you, it was really hard to leave. It was really hard to leave. That, especially being on, I was on council for 10 years. That's a long part of my, you know, growing up years. You know, you're done university, this is your real adult life. And you make such great relationships with some of the people on council. Like I, you know, I remember being in council meetings and they got out of hand because we started laughing because we were enjoying ourselves so much. They used to laugh, go, oh my goodness, if Mireille Votor and Iris O'Claire Bernard and myself got into a room, you wouldn't be able to hear anything else because we would laugh and joke, but we enjoyed each other so much. So being around intelligent, uh, professional women was a, something of real value to me because a lot of times I'm in the room by myself and I'm the only woman. So for me to be able to come to a, an arena of well-educated, well-versed, strong, opinionated, pride and passionate women was something that was really, I was very lucky to have and still lucky to have those people in my life. And it's really hard to leave. So the way that you don't leave, which is why you have volunteers who are past presidents have been on associations and council meetings and council committees for 20, 30, 40 years, we don't wanna leave. Once you get involved, you really love it. You like the people that you're working with. You like knowing what's going on because you like to know what's going on in the pulse. The first year after I didn't get to go to the, you know, the Engineers Canada meetings, well, what did you guys talk about? Well, what did you do? Like, I want to know a little bit more. So you still want to know what's going on. What's a contentious subject? What are you working on? What's happening in our world? But once you're involved once, you don't really want to let go, which is why we have, I mean, I don't know any other association that has member pins that go up, you know, five, 10, 15, 20, like, I mean, we have, that's enormous to be able to do that. But I think, I think part of my, the girlfriends and the friendships that I've made, you know, like I, I feel like the Hollies, the Brents, the, especially the people in St. John, because everybody who was on the St. John Council, representing St. John at the New Brunswick Council, when we go back and did the St. John branch, so you get to see each other, you know, at least twice a month, which is really, really lovely again, going back to you have a, the same passion that it's really fun to be around those people and you don't want to leave them. And when I come to the council meetings now for our annual meeting that's coming up, like it's very really exciting to see, especially some of the old guys. I know that sounds terrible, but it's lovely. I've, I always felt really supported by some of our past presidents and it's lovely to see them. And it's hard to see some people get older and some myself included when I see all these young people and go, oh my gosh, like was I ever that young doing this? And I, yeah, I guess I was, but it's hard to believe that. And it's nice to see young people be involved too.